What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. Week 4 waiver wire ads. I'm doing this one the same as last week, same as the week before. I'll go position by position and then I'll rank them at the end for waiver priority. Uh, the cutoff again is 40%, so I'm only going to mention players that are available in at least 60% of leagues, which means rostered in 40%. Also remember that I always record this prior to the Monday night football game, so if something big happens in there, just check for the pinned comment at the top of the comment section. So let's start things off at running back with Ronald Jones. And would you believe me if I told you that Ronald Jones has more rushing yards this season than Joe Mixon, James Conner, Sonny Michel, Karrion Johnson, David Johnson, Chris Carson, Philip Lindsay, Austin Eckler, and Le'Veon Bell. Well, he does. He just hasn't scored a touchdown yet. This doesn't mean that you're just going out there and acquiring Jones everywhere. Like if someone owns him, you're trading everything for him. No, because realistically, his touchdown upside is still pretty low, so that's not exactly a fluke that he hasn't scored. And although he's turned both of his targets into gains of 18 and 41 yards. So he's been good when they throw him the football. He only has two targets, and they're just not throwing him the football. You know, it baffles me that they still use Peyton Barber. We know who Barber is. I'm sure they know who Barber is. He's a mediocre running back who's highly inefficient and can't catch. Maybe you don't think Ronald Jones is all that good, but there's at least a chance that he's going to be a good starting running back in the NFL. There's no chance that Barber ever will be. I mean, he's like 10th in yards per carry among qualified running backs this year. But anyways, anyways, however you think about Ronald Jones, it doesn't matter because he needs to be owned because there's not that much running back talent on free agency every week. So if you've got a guy that's getting the rushing yards that maybe they'll involve down the line in the receiving game, hasn't scored yet, but when he scores, he's going to be viable in fantasy. He has to be owned. Tampa Bay finally took a step in the right direction this past week, getting the offense going. They had a ton more yards than they had in the previous weeks. And you want the lead back on good offenses. So he should be owned in far more leagues than he is. I do still think that Alexander Madison needs to be owned in all leagues. You do not need to claim him, so he won't be on the list of players you need to claim. He's more of a player you can add. And if your league only has, say, five bench spots, and you're like, man, I like my bench, I don't really want to add Madison, then don't. I think if you have, say, seven, I think seven bench spots is a really good amount for his sort of upside because he's instantly a running back one if Cook were to ever miss time, and that's not something you can say about very many running backs. He will crush if Cook goes down with an injury. So if you're a Cook owner or if you have a deep bench, he should not be 13% owned. So Adam, the next running back is an unfortunate one because I really like Aaron Jones, but Jamal Williams also needs to be owned. LaFleur said this week that he wants to even up the touches and he did exactly that. Not only did Williams finish with 14 touches as opposed to Aaron Jones 11, but he also beat him by a large margin in snaps. He had 33 snaps to Aaron Jones 21. Now Jones is still the one I'd rather have and it's possible that Williams got a little bit more work this week because Jones was struggling and Williams was doing kind of decent. But Jones has been struggling all year. And so we should expect a roughly 50-50 split moving forward. Very similar to Royce Freeman and Philip Lindsay. You saw Lindsay go off this week, but the touches are basically split. So there are weeks where Freeman, you know, in the past few weeks, Freeman's been doing better than Lindsay. So it's going to flip-flop. So there will be weeks when Jones does better, where Jones scores the two touchdowns like just happened, but there will be weeks where Williams has one on the ground and one through the air. So it's going to be pretty frustrating. Again, still Jones is the guy I'd rather own, but he's owned everywhere and Williams is on free agency in a ton of leagues. So he should not be only 15% owned. You should go get him. The last running back we'll talk about today is is Wayne Gallman, and I know that one is super gross, you know, you don't want Wayne Gallman on your team, his final stat line this week did not look good, it did not look promising, but Barkley suffered a thigh contusion and an ankle sprain on Sunday, the contusion isn't bad, don't worry about that, it's the ankle sprain we need to worry about, he's getting an MRI done today, so on Monday, so when you see this, it's very possible that the reports are out and we know if it's a low or a high ankle sprain. Initial reports seem to think it's a high ankle sprain, but we're going to have to just wait and see. If it's a low ankle sprain, that means he could return next week, but will probably not miss very much time if he does miss any time. If that's the case, 
I wouldn't even bother adding Gallman unless you are really desperate for a running back this week. But if you don't think you'd be using Gallman this week, then don't claim him if he has a low ankle sprain. However, if Saquon Barkley has a high ankle sprain, as the initial reports suggest it could be, then Gallman needs to be the top running back claim this week because Barkley would be expected to miss about a month. And with how terrible their other running backs are, we can expect Gallman to be an every down player, which is what he was this week when Barkley went out with the injury. It's possible that they would bring someone in because again, Gallman's not very good, but if they don't, then Gallman's going to be a weekly starter for about a month, and that's someone you use a waiver claim on. All right, enough with running back. Let's move on to wide receiver with my guy, Preston Williams. I've been talking about him for a while. I've mentioned him a few times over the summer because I said he had a lot of talent. Team doesn't really have any talent ahead of him, uh, but you weren't ever drafting him. Just keeping an eye on him in deeper leagues. Then over these first few weeks, He's been a guy I've kind of brought up here and there saying, hey, keep an eye out for Preston Williams. He looks pretty good. He's getting some volume. I'm officially declaring Williams a guy you should be adding. Devonte Parker is one of the worst wide receivers I've ever seen, yet he ranks second through the first two weeks in air yards, and he ranks fourth through three weeks. There are only three wide receivers who have more air yards than Devonte Parker, and he's turned those 433 air yards and 20 targets into a 6 for 131 and no touchdown stat line. Preston Williams is the best wide receiver on the Dolphins roster. And let's be honest, they're going to be in garbage time every single game. This past week, Williams was given 12 targets and 129 air yards, which he turned into 4 for 68 through the air. He's only the wide receiver 46 on the year, but he's turned matchups against the Ravens, Patriots, and Cowboys into 11 10 and 11 half PPR points, which isn't elite or anything. And that's not what you're adding as an elite wide receiver. But his snap percent has risen from 41 to 68 to 96% this week. So he's officially an every down player. He's produced even in these very difficult wide receiver matchups, and he's still getting a ton of volume and his schedule is going to significantly ease up moving forward. He's only 3% owned, and I don't expect anyone to be putting in claims for him but he's a guy, if you have a deeper bench, you should be adding because I would not be surprised at all if you look at the stat line at the end of the season and you see him at 1,000 yards because that's roughly what he's on pace for. The next wide receiver is Nelson Aguilar, and he is somehow just 37% owned. I had him as a claim last week, so either you or someone else in your league probably already owns him. But in short, you know, he's a guy who you can be starting as long as one of Alshon and Jackson remain out. Alshon should return this week. That's what it kind of looks like. But realistically, that only affects J.J. Arcega-Whiteside. You know, Aguilar is an every down player even before these injuries, but now he's an every down player also seeing double digit targets. So he's definitely someone you need to get on your team. So I'd be putting a claim in to get him. Uh, MVS is somehow only 50% owned. I don't really understand that one. He has the exact same number of targets and more air yards than Devontae Adams. And he has a very high upside role in this Packers offense. And he's got incredible raw talent. People maybe dumped him after one bad game or something. I don't really know why he's only 50% owned. But he shouldn't be. He should be closer to 80% owned, so get him on your team. Philip Dorsett is next, only 5% owned, and he's actually the wide receiver 15 on the year. His one bad game came in week two when they played the Dolphins, and they were just testing out Antonio Brown in the offense. All you need to know about Philip Dorsett is that Brady trusts him. Early in his time with the Patriots, they didn't really have the best connection because Brady really only throws the guys that he trusts, where they're going to be on the field. Well, he absolutely does now, and with Brown gone and Edelman suffering an injury, we don't yet know the severity of the injury. Um, the x-ray came out negative. He's getting an MRI to see if there's any further damage to the chest, but if he's going to miss any time, then definitely Dorsett needs to not only be owned, but started. But even if he's going to be back, with AB gone, Dorsett's an every down wide receiver. And this is a pretty darn good offense. I don't know their exact game plan when Nikhil Harry does come back, but at least for the time being, Dorsett can be used as a flex option every single week, and flex options 
shouldn't be 5% owned. Next, we have DJ Chark, and he's been on the list the past two weeks, so I'm sorry I keep talking about him, but he's the wide receiver six on the year, and he's only 41% owned. He does have more receiving yards than air yards, and the touchdown rate is definitely going to come down, but I shouldn't have to tell you that he's not going to finish as the wide receiver six, and that doesn't mean he should be available in 59% of leagues, because that's just ridiculous. Minshew continues to look good, not great, but he looks good, and Chart continues to dominate the air yards in Jacksonville with a 40% market share. So if he's out there, claim him. The last guy is Mecole Hardman, who should probably be 100% owned, given that he's just Tyree Kill's backup. So since Tyree Kill's owned in every single league, wouldn't you think that all of those owners would just go, oh, look, the guy that's filling in for him in the deep role on an awesome offense, I'll just add him and start him instead of Tyreek Hill. Then when Tyreek Hill comes back, you just dump Hardman and you play Hill again. So I don't know why that's not the case. And you can really add him even if you're not a Tyreek Hill owner because every wide receiver getting six targets a game in the Kansas City offense needs to be owned. At tight end, let's be honest, there are only a few that actually do anything and they're very likely already owned. We mentioned Olsen last week, but he got added in plenty of leagues, so you can't really get him anymore. The only guy I can really find that's available in over 60% of leagues is Will Disley. He's not a guy that I would go after, but I guess if you're desperate, you've had a bunch of injuries to the position or something like that, then I guess go out there and add Will Disley. Definitely not claim, but he scored a few touchdowns in these past two weeks. His touchdown did come on the last play of the game this week, and you're still only getting like five targets a week from him. But hey, they play Arizona this week, so he's got a decent shot at putting up another solid stat line. At quarterback, you know that we never claim anyone outside of two quarterback leagues. So if you're in a two quarterback league and no one added Daniel Jones or Kyle Allen for some reason, well then claim Jones and then see if Allen's going to start this week before adding him. But again, never claim a quarterback in a one quarterback league. For streamers, if that's the route you're going with, then the top options in order this week are anyone that I don't mention next that's available in less than 30% of leagues but happens to be available in yours. So if there's someone that's like 80% owned or something like that and you're like, oh, you didn't mention him. Well, that's because he's 80% owned. I'm not going to mention him as a streamer. That's who you should be going after this week. But including players that are actually on free agency in most leagues, we have Daniel Jones versus Washington, Case Keenum at the Giants, assuming he doesn't get hurt tonight. Andy Dalton at Pittsburgh. Jacoby Brissett versus Oakland. Matthew Stafford versus Kansas City. Then Mason Rudolph versus the Bengals. I wouldn't feel great about those last two in Stafford and Rudolph, so I'd try and look at one of those top four if you're streaming. All right, let's go over waiver claim priority and then we can be done here. So at one, Wayne Gallman, assuming we get confirmation that it's a high ankle sprain for Barkley. Next, we have DJ Chark, then Aguilar, Philip Dorsett, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, Jamal Williams, Ronald Jones, then Nicole Hardman with the ads, not claims, being Alexander Madison, Preston Williams, and Will Disley if you're desperate. So that's it for the week four waiver wire video. We'll be doing trade targets next, followed by start sit videos later in the week. But that's the end of this one. I hope you all did enjoy. If you did, how about hitting that like button? If you're new here, how about subscribing to the channel? But thanks for watching.